Wizard 101 has been around for 15 years and has been receiving new updates and expansions throughout that entire lifespan. But is it possible to beat all 15 years worth of content without dying once? That's the question I've set out to answer and today I'll be continuing the world of Avalon where if I die, I delete my character and end the series with this video. As we continue the hunt for the powerful relic known as the Sword of Kings, our search takes us to the darkest depths of Avalon, the Weird. This unnerving forest is where a group of ghosts drag the Sword of Kings, and after beating up the ghost of an Avalonian knight, allowing them to regain their senses, they point us in the direction of the main man after the Sword of Kings, who's also responsible for the death of Avalon's last king. The Nameless Knight is up there as one of the strongest individual mobs we've come across so far, statistically speaking. Loads of health, an array of powerful storm spells, all of the fundamental traits of a strong boss, except for one crew crucial problem. He's got no friends. Wizard 101's toughest boss fights tend to have three to four enemies all slinging spells towards you at once, and when it's just a 1v1 fight like our duel with the Nameless Knight here, it tends to be pretty easy since no matter how strong he may be, he's still just one guy who casts one spell a turn. Nameless Knight in the building. I'm gonna just fortify turn one here. Ooh, and he crits it too. I don't like how much damage is about to do. 700 off rip. He still has a lot of pips, but this fortify will at least help mitigate whatever he's got cooking up as his next turn of the wombo combo. He's definitely gonna hit again. So his shield is gonna be useless here, I think, as a result of that, because he'll be out of pips. So I'm just gonna life blade and hope he doesn't save them. Oh my, he's actually saving them. He's actually saving them. I should have shielded, okay? The AI is a mystery to me, man. All right, buddy, I'll shield then. I'll, if that's what you want, if that's what you're going for, gunning for, I'll shield. Sirens, I'll take that. Not a big deal. I can get rid of the accuracy debuff with ease. And now he's broke. No pips, no crypto. I can't think of a better time to faint, to be honest with you. Faint's going down. He did change his bubble to a fortify. It's a smart play, but it's a little annoying. So I'm just gonna keep stacking for a bit, see what happens. Get blade number two on board. And I wouldn't hate a third and maybe even a fourth. I do kind of want to one around this guy if possible. That would be ideal. So I'll drop the TC blade. If we can find another, great. If we can't, that's what it is. Oh, I do have time to search because he blew his pips on this Triton. I am mad. The fourth blade. I didn't even have to dig for this fucking thing. It just came right over here. Blade number four up. I mean, everything's going my way this fight. Let's just horse lord this guy and get it over with. With the ghost of the Nameless Knight defeated and no Sword of Kings in his possession, his guilty specter desires to help us with the hopes of doing some good in the world before his spirit fades, allegedly. He points us in the direction of a friendly dragon whose treasure he stole, claiming that if we return this treasure to him, he'll use it to track down leads on the Sword of Kings for us like the Dragon Ball radar. Upon giving the three-color serpent his divination tool back, it shows us a reflection of our lead to the Sword of Kings, for real this time, hopefully, maybe. Her name is Gwendolyn, the former queen of Avalon in its golden age. She resides in a town very close to here, Dindar, as its leader, but getting to that town won't be easy. A local marauder known as the Indigo Giant has posted up right outside its entrance and he's been preying on anyone who wanders near his abode. Now the Indigo Giant is pretty much the same as the Nameless Knight, statistically. Similar health, similar spells, yada yada, you get the gist. But unlike the Nameless Knight, he has enough riz to make a friend, his only friend, resulting in his fight being a normal 2v1. He'll be a bit tougher to take down than our last boss, so let's see if I can keep this momentum going. I've been going second a lot today. Kind of a bad omen. I don't want to dig too hard for a fortify because I do kind of like this hand. So I'm just gonna shield. Okay, so he cracking. This makes the shield not a bad play because he's still gonna have 10 pips next turn. I'm hoping he's gonna use all these pips, so I'm just going to light blade. Let's go, little pirate. This ain't Dragon Spire anymore. You gotta, you gotta have something better cooking than that. There's the levy. Guy got no blades up, so I can't be mad. Blade number one is up now. Oh, and I got room to get blade number two up too. I'm gonna play a little bit greedy. And I'm gonna just go for a one shot, one kill, all these guys at once. Let's get blade number two up though and just play it by ear. I'm gonna get rid of the wanted. I don't think I'll have a need to use it unless they death ninja pigs, in which case I'm gonna wish I had that back. He's dropping the ax. Not too bad. He's out of pip still, which is great. Faints up now too. I think I have another TC blade. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yes, I do have one. Awesome. Okay. So we'll have three blades. We'll have a faint. That's three blades. The faint's there. Nobody got any pips that could possibly disrupt the setup. So Forest Lord is going down. Will it one shot? The crit's there. That looks like a one shot to me. Having carved out a safe path to Dundara, we waltz on in there and track down the former queen Gwendolyn as the three color serpent foretold. Speaking with Gwendolyn, we come to know a bit more about the current state of Avalon. 
Allegedly, a cursed dragon is headed its own army known as the Froudlings, and they're responsible for the general chaos and lack of government and order across the world. We still don't know who this dragon is or what its motivations are, but considering the state of the once great world of Avalon, it's clear that we need to help Gwendolyn out with her goal of re-establishing Avalon's old order of knights. Besides, this will likely aid our search for the Sword of Kings anyway, since finding that big sharp stick likely goes hand in hand with defeating the Froudlings. To re-establish this knightly order and help bring a semblance of civilization back to Avalon, we need a magic symbol to unite these warriors and prove to them that we can actually bring this band back together, a single silver rose. However, obtaining this flower isn't as easy as just plucking it from a bush because the flower bed growing them is magically connected to a tower, which is triggered to fall if a single rose is removed. A warrior known as the Black Knight is consequently guarding this tower, and she's a more than competent boss with a diverse set of fire spells capable of burning through shields with damage over time cards and piercing through defenses with her infallible aura, granting 15% pierce and accuracy to her spells. Her offensive arsenal is no joke, so hopefully we get lucky and she only casts five pip spells like every other boss for some reason. Ooh, we going first in this one. I'll take that. I can just start off with a set. Set shield coming in clutch literally immediately. Do I dare just set shield again for kicks? Let's just, oh, I fortified action, never mind. <laughs> it's a defensive maneuver either way. Well, at least she doesn't have anything that can get rid of my blades or the like. I'm just gonna start blading up. Best to do it now before the storm boss starts throwing leviathans around if he has a trained, I'm not sure if he does. What's with the arc one spells today? We're getting a lot of those. Ooh, we can get blade number two and an enchant. Yes, sir. Firezilla, still no like the hitters in here at all. Do I want to hit now? No, I think I can save. I don't think the storm minion is going to be popping up anything crazy. So I think I can just go for the full bread and butter, one stop shop, one stop kill. You know what I'm saying? Three blades up. I'll get the spirit blade as the fourth one. He's going to fire blade his own minion. I was hoping we'd leave this behind in first arc, but I guess not. You know, maybe if those two rub their individual single brain cells together, they can get a eight pip spell maybe even off. But we're going to get blade number four down and now we're just going to slap him with the forest lord. That's kind of just how it goes these days. Ooh, a crit elephant. That actually might do a lot. I might've been talking too much shit. Holy fuck. I was talking a little bit of shit. They've got no pips. So I think I'm safe to force Lord and then heal after if it doesn't kill the boss. I hope it does. Or it can just, yeah, I'm just gonna heal. <laughs> oh, it's okay. They're gonna waste it all on three pip spell because that's just how the <laughs> bosses are working for some reason in this world. With the blades and the faint, I think there's just gonna be a one-shot kill. I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. No maybes about it. Crit's there. Get out of here. As the Black Knight admits defeat, we show mercy on her, resulting in her cluing us in on the reason she's guarding this tower. Her brother is magically sealed on the first floor by a mermaid due to wronging her, and the only way she'll release him and allow us to pluck a silver rose guilt-free is for us to manufacture a mermaid tail, forcing her prisoner to swim with her for eternity in the pond outside the tower. After assembling this mermaid tail, the Black Knight's brother is freed and the magic link between the tower and silver rose bed is severed. Once we snag a rose and bring it to Gwendolyn, we're finally ready to reunite this warrior band. We race across Avalon, enlisting the services of every knight we've helped thus far, telling all of them to convene at the old knight's hall where King Artorias and his guard once stood. Knights new and old rallied together under Queen Gwendolyn's banner, and thus, the Knights of the Silver Rose are reformed. With the band back together and a formidable army formed to rally against the Froudlings, Queen Gwendolyn is ready to begin her offensive. She sends us to Lake Namu, where the guardian of the Sword of Kings dwells, the Lady of the Lake. However, much of this territory is under Froudling control, and in order to access it, we need to dispatch the knight in charge of the border, Malgrin the Scourge. This guy is honestly weaker than the bosses before him, but I promise a tough one is coming up. Stay tuned. Another day, another storm boss. It's Malgrin and his hand. Oh, a handsome friend. Over. Okay, I'm getting a little nervous. We just keep going second this episode. It's a. I guess it's just an Avalon tradition at this point. Look at him. He's just a regular boss. He's gonna need the help. I'm gonna start with the shield though because he does have a lot of pips. I'm sure he'll keep those pips. Stormzilla, no crit, not gonna do a ton. The shield's up, he's still gonna have pips. He's gonna have six big, only five big ones. Bro, got a fail pip. Honestly, I think they're both gonna hit this turn or the next. So I'm gonna try and faint. I think it's a good opportunity because I don't think he'll use a high powered spell to break it. I think he'll be out of pips. He's going aggro again. He's gonna fizzle. All right, it's fine. And the faint's gonna go down on boss, man. Might as well start blading up. I think I'll get blade number one down now while we can. Ooh, he's just gonna stack. Oh, god damn. All right, it's fine. This dude's getting rid of it with a, a four pip arc one absolute shitter. He's throwing, you gotta ban him from the team up. And blade number one's on. Health is looking a bit low, all things considered. I'm gonna play cheesy as hell and I'm gonna regenerate right now because by the time I finish getting my blades up, I'll have enough pips for a hit anyway. 
He's refreshing his goddamn. Everybody's on the same wavelength here. Except uh, me, apparently. Heal number two at least hit. Thank God for that. We'll put this life blade. Actually, I'm gonna put this spirit blade up just as a buffer in case this guy procs the Leviathan. The idea behind that is that this tri blade will spawn a myth blade and a death blade. And both those blades will get hopefully broken in the process of elimination. That is a Leviathan. So minimal strategy, but one that could maybe help in some instances. Uh, we're gonna get another blade up though. Colonel Peanut's gonna get this blade up. I think I'm just gonna rip the forest lord, see what happens. Now, I missed the crit earlier on the heal. Would love to get the crit in return here. Mm, there it is. And hey, two dead mobs. There you go. With Malgrin dead, we're able to open the gate to the lakefront and meet up with the stable boy, Warwick, and a former retainer of Gwendolyn, Sister Constance, who both want to help us. The two of them assist us in thinning out the Froudling ranks by throwing a flaming pomegranate into a meeting house and lighting it ablaze. We're able to use this bit of arson as a distraction to sneak deeper into Lake Namu's shore, where the Lady of the Lake is hiding, holed up inside a watchtower. She's employed the services of a seraph to act as a protector, and this seraph will only let us meet with the Lady of the Lake if we prove our morality by defeating the witch terrorizing the lake shore, Black Annie. Black Annie acts as a supercharged version of all the storm bosses we faced this episode. Lots of HP, hard hitting spells, the whole nine yards. However, what puts her above her weaker contemporaries is her chief. At the start of the duel, Black Annie casts a storm global spell, Gale Wind, that boosts all storm hits cast by 25%. This global can't be replaced and is effectively permanent, so she's essentially hitting 25% harder at all times. Her secondary cheat occurs when any single target spell below three pips is cast at her. If I drop a faint on her, she hits me with a vampire for free and stuns me for a round. Combine this with her myth minion, who can remove all of my blades at a moment's notice with an earthquake, and you have a boss minion combo that's tough to set up against. Thankfully, I held on to that storm resistance hat from the Mirror Lake episode to help mitigate Black Annie's damage a bit, so let's get prepared for a battle of attrition. Not going first does suck a ton of ass, a whole lot of ass, but I am going to fortify immediately because these guys both hit hard. I think I'm gonna just straight up set here because this minion has earthquake pips. Ooh, look at the fucking two million pip tempest with the crit. God help us. Now the shield kind of is not gonna do very much. I'm so worried about an earthquake from this guy because that will take my setup off. So I think I'm just gonna regen here and then hope he uses all his pips and then go for uh, my blades and whatnot. See, this is, what, this is what I'm talking about. It's fine that he gets rid of the shield because the shield wasn't gonna come in too, too handy anyway. But had I bladed here, would have been gone. And that's why everybody hates myth minions. Take notes, King's Isle. Here comes the heal. No crit is a bummer, but it'll at least do its job as a passive health gain. I'm gonna start blading now because it's kind of at the point where it's like, if not now, then when? I might even faint this minion just to get him out of the equation as quickly as possible as well. All right, little buddy, he's doing rollout on us. God damn. We got the two blades up. I'm just gonna go for the four sword, see what happens. No crit. Okay, maybe I think with the fame, it still kills, so it's fine. I'm not wrong, thank God. <laughs> Now it's just us and the boss. She does have Leviathan, which again, can get rid of blades, but she definitely ain't gonna be casting that too often. So I'm not too pressed. I'm gonna Volcanic though, cause she's building pips up. I think I'm gonna put the faint on her now. Just to get it on there, it's fine if I trigger the cheat because I can tank it and I have a lot of health right now. So if I get stunned, especially with the shield up, I'm not gonna be in like immediate peril. You see, aren't you glad I shielded now? I mean, you might not be glad, but I'm glad. There's the Kookaburra blade I was looking for. Blade number three is on there. And I think it's just time to Forest Lord and hope it kills. I think it will. I'm not 100% sure because again, we do have significantly less damage with this gear set. Oh, I like the crit a lot there. Yeah, that crit actually was the difference maker, I think. Good shit. That storm resist hat is just the gift that keeps on giving, and with it, we were able to cruise right through another cheating boss. With Black Annie defeated, the Seraph guarding the entrance to the Lady of the Lake's tower gives us a smile, gesturing towards its entrance. Whether the Lady of the Lake is still in possession of the Sword of Kings is uncertain, and whether she sees us as a worthy recipient of it is likewise unclear. Next time, we'll finally meet with Avalon's strongest guardian, hopefully get the Sword of Kings, and also not die trying. As always, see you guys then.